and get started here in a couple seconds. We'll just let everyone get on. If you have multiple people at, in your room right now and you're having a viewing party, feel free to put um, all of the names in the chat as well so that everyone gets attendance credit for today. And just so everyone knows too, we are recording our session today. So thank you so much. Um, we're so excited to have you and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome on behalf of the literacy team. My name is Lily Marotti and I'm here with Maddie Limbrick. We're instructional coaches and we are so excited to be here with you this morning. Thank you for taking time out of the start of your day to be here with us. This grab and go is a two part series where we will be providing strategies and information to target and support vocabulary instruction. During our time together today, we will of course be talking about vocabulary, but more specifically, context clues and strategies that support explicitly teaching them throughout our instruction. We know that vocabulary is a critical piece of supporting our students' understanding of the text. This component of literacy can be found in our whole group reading instruction, small group reading instruction, writing instruction, and it can also be applied across all content areas. Jennifer Saravallo has this quote that says, reading comprehension is linked to a reader's ability to know and understand the words in the text from primary grades through adulthood. We know that vocabulary is a skill that spans through all grade levels and it builds as our students gain new experiences with reading and writing. Vocabulary supports the understanding of a text and provides a deeper level of comprehension. So by supporting our students in providing vocabulary instruction, we really are meeting our board goals of ensuring the success of the whole child, closing that achievement gap and continuing to perform at the top 10%. We also know that in District 54, we value our equity and inclusion statement that ensures that all students, staff, and community members are safe, welcomed, and cared for. So for the first part of this series, we're going to look closely at utilizing context clues as a strategy to support our students' vocabulary. We know that this ultimately helps them understand and then comprehend the text. Um, just for some background, a quick check-in. Into the chat, if you could please enter a why if you have used context clues when identifying an unknown word with your students before. Oh my goodness, all the whys are coming in so quick. <laughs> so we are super familiar with um, the term context clues. And so um, we're going to go ahead and just dive into knowing that like, we may have asked our students to use context clues as a strategy to make meaning of unknown words, but context clues encompass many different types of words and phrases that students use to make meaning. For example, um, we may commonly use context clues as an inference, but they can also be definitions or examples within the text. Context clues are also text features and homonyms, and they can also be synonyms and antonyms. All of these examples work to support our students' understanding of vocabulary, and during whole group instruction, we have the opportunity to explicitly model these strategies to show students how good readers can make meaning of any unknown words. In SPLCs, we plan with the end in mind. And so as we prepare for planning whole group instruction, the Developing High Quality Common Assessment Checklist is such a valuable tool that we can reference. One of the components on this checklist is providing an opportunity for students to demonstrate their understanding of vocabulary in context. So knowing we create our common assessments prior to planning instruction, we have the ability to strategically plan and model different strategies that students will be able to use context clues to determine unknown words and then align these strategies to our assessment. Let's take a look at some questions we could utilize for common assessments and model during our instruction. Looking at this grade level as an example, we can identify prompts within the essential skills that would create the most meaning for our students at this time in our instruction. This prompt, are there any sentences that can help explain the meaning of blank, is a great place to start when thinking of my group of students. When planning for the common assessment, I can play with the wording of that question to identify a specific point in the text and provide options for my students to select the best context clue, such as this. In paragraph three, which of the underlined phrases gives a clue to the meaning of, and then providing those choices for my students to select the best meaning. 
Another option I may use during instruction is what text features are included to help you identify the unknown word? Again, I could utilize this prompt during instruction, but I can edit the wording of the question for my common assessment to be, write to explain how the caption helps you determine the meaning of the unknown word. By providing these different options of question types, I'm giving my students the opportunity to flexibly think about context clues and specifically demonstrate their understanding of the essential skills when it comes time for that common assessment. So both of these questions align to standard four and provide an opportunity for us to collect data to see our students' progress within this standard. So with those specific questions in mind, let's take a look at how we could model these questions from the common assessment in our instruction. As I'm modeling reading the text and annotating for the main idea, I can authentically model our reading behaviors as a think aloud. For example, as I'm reading, I come across the word camouflage and can say, as I was reading, I saw the word camouflage. I can use context clues to help me understand the meaning of the word. Are there any sentences that help explain the meaning of camouflage? Or can the text features help me understand the word camouflage? I'm gonna go back and reread. Referring back to the common assessment, I know we are assessing synonyms and text features as part of standard four. Therefore, I can take this opportunity to model using a synonym in the text in this lesson to model how I can find the meaning of the word camouflage. As I reread paragraph three, I noticed that there is a sentence that says, the word camouflage means disguise. Um, and that means camouflage and disguise are synonyms or they mean the same thing. This text also allows me as a reader to use text features to understand the meaning of the word camouflage. And I will also model this for my students by saying, the caption and photograph help me better understand the word camouflage. I can see the leaf butterfly is hard to see because it looks just like the leaf. This is how it hides from predators. And this helps me understand that the word camouflage means to blend in. This modeling was authentic and purposeful without taking additional time away from instruction or distracting from our text. It's important to stop and model how we can make meaning of words because in this specific example and in this text, if students didn't know what the word camouflage meant, they wouldn't be able to understand the main idea of the text. And so with this modeling, we created clarity for our students so they now can understand the meaning of camouflage and they can also walk away with two strategies they can apply in their own reading. So let's just take a moment and process. Reflecting on what we've discussed so far, what are you excited to incorporate into your instruction? In the chat, please share something that you perhaps see yourself trying tomorrow, next week, or something in the coming units. So finding synonyms. Oh, I love how we're having some ideas too for how we might annotate that. Different types of context clues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think alouds are so powerful. Modeling that authentic reading for our students using text features. Thank you so much, everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, giving that vocabulary of reiterating that synonym is a part of, of our speech and how we can use as a context clues. Thank you. These are great takeaways. Wonderful. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and pass it off over to Lily. Perfect. We're going to take a look at another grade level and take a look at how, what vocabulary questions we could ask on our common assessment for standard RI4. We're going to be referring back to the literacy resource guide and use it as a resource for this. So this is a fifth grade example. And one question that we could ask is which word is an antonym of the word blank? We can also be providing our students with multiple choice um, answer choices for them to choose. Another way to ask this question is the best replacement for the word blank in the passage is, and then again, providing them with those multiple choice answer choices. Now, a way we can dig a little bit deeper and have our students think a little bit harder with this question is um, 
asking them, how does the author use the word blank influence your interpretation of the text? Now, this option provides our students with the opportunity to respond by writing a short answer. So you might start off by asking multiple choice questions in the beginning of the year. And as the year progresses, we can continue um, in dig digging a little bit deeper, extending and asking those um, different kinds of questions to get their responses. We know we wouldn't ask all of these questions on one common assessment. However, by providing multiple question types similar to the common assessment questions throughout the unit, we will allow our students to think flexibly and they'll be able to apply these skills in multiple ways. As a PLC, we have the ability to select question types that align with our students' needs. So these questions can be modeled and applied flexibly during our whole group instruction and then be transferred to that small group instruction as well. Let's take a look at how we could model these questions from the common assessment in our instruction. We know that as a PLC, we always take a look at the how behind what we are teaching. This is something that we're constantly having conversations about. And as we go through our whole group plans, we can keep in mind the question from our common assessment and make sure that we're mirroring it within our instruction. So as a PLC, we can determine the words or phrases that we want to model explicitly for our students during that whole group time, and then teach them strategies that they can then apply when they see future text. For example, I know that my students are going to see text where they can use context clues such as synonyms, antonyms, examples, and definitions. So let's take a look at how I could explicitly model these context clues within my whole group instruction. So in this fifth grade example, we are going to come across the word producers. I might think aloud, how does the author explain the word producers? I will then model how I can go back and reread to see the examples that the author provided and explain what a producer is. I might say in paragraph one, the author explains producers by giving an example. I can also continue reading and model inferring the definition by saying, it says plants in corn are producers. The author also defines producers in the following sentence by explaining how they use the sun's energy to make food through photosynthesis. Now, by strategically choosing these words during planning with my PLC, I was able to explicitly model the strategies that my students can use in future texts, and I was also able to model the different question types that my students will be encountering on their upcoming common assessment. And as our readers become more advanced in the upper grades and junior high, we can still apply those prompts from the curricular resource guide in our modeling and transfer this into our common assessments. As my students continue to practice determining the meaning of unknown words, as a PLC, we can identify specific prompts that will support our modeling and scaffold our students' use of the strategies. For example, if I want my students to practice using text evidence to support their definitions, I may model the question. When I first read the passage, I thought blank meant blank. Was I correct? Justify your answer. This same question can be transferred to the common assessment and also be an interactive opportunity as a turn and talk during my instruction. Another option could include having students differentiate the meaning of words using the connotation. One option for modeling and assessing this skill could be the question, based on the connotation of the tone words used in the passage, what does blank best mean? So by doing this, um, our, our opportunity then to bring this into our instruction, um, we're targeting these strategies as we are reading to our class. As I'm teaching whole group, I'm reading the text and annotating for my purpose. I can authentically model a reading behavior as a think aloud. For example, as I was reading, I saw the word perilous. We can use the connotation and the tone the author provides in the surrounding text to help us understand the meaning of the word. The text says, it crashes, flecked with gold dust, down steep cliffs. Few humans have ever seen them. The way the author used these phrases, I can determine that perilous means dangerous. At this time, I'm modeling for my students how I'm using the text to infer the meaning of the word using connotation. 
this one strategy, the tax is it's only one that the tax provides. But as I continue to read, there's another opportunity within the word cormorants. Because I've been modeling strategies on making meaning of words in the passage, I can now provide my students with an opportunity to practice the skill during instruction. I can do this through a turn and talk, and I might say, when I first read the word cormorants, I thought it meant other trained people that know how to fish. Am I correct? Turn and talk with your partner to find evidence and justify your answer. If my students are able to successfully apply the skill, they might say something like, you are not correct. As I continue reading, I can see that the text defines cormorants as sleek black birds with long necks. I've now provided my students the opportunity to practice this skill in a scaffolded method, and as the teacher, I was able to quickly gain an understanding of how well my students are doing um, with the skill, and um, I can then use this as a quick check-in to see if my students are using context clues efficiently. Using this lesson, I can plan for small group instruction and then continue planning whole group instruction based on how my students responded. So with the examples we've shared with you this morning, we invite you to consider how do you envision yourself applying these strategies in your classroom? In the chat, please add one strategy you see yourself trying in the coming weeks. Thank you, Sheila. Yes, those think alouds and finding evidence. Um, it's such a great opportunity for our students to be able to see us as authentic readers and thinking aloud what we do in the process of defining this vocabulary. So thank you so much. The interactive turn and talks are so meaningful for our students to make the connections. The finding the mistake, what a great way to level up a question. Thank you so much for all of those reflections. We really appreciate your time and considering how you can bring this to life with your own students. We hope to see many of you again at our phase two presentation on November 14th, and we can't wait to hear about your application of these strategies. We thank you so much for your time and dedication this morning, and we wish you a wonderful Thursday. Um, if you've not yet entered your name into the chat, please do so for attendance purposes, and we wish you all a wonderful day. If you'd like the bit.ly, it's there at the bottom, or you can reach out to myself or Lily for any additional questions, as well as your district literacy coach. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful Thursday.